So now that you've finished rendering your animation, you can close this and open a new blend file. And this is to actually add the audio to our textured render because we're going to do the editing through Blender. So with the new file open, you click video editing and this will bring us into the video editing kind of setup that Blender has. So within here, we can go to add and then within add, we can go to movie. And then this will allow you to add your MP4 that we exported. So go to where you have that and import it. And this will give us our animation. And since this is a new file, the actual render length that it's set to is set to its default of 250, which you can see in the bottom left. So we want to set it to the end of our clip. And this box here shows our current frame. So that's what we would want to set our end frame to. But because it starts at zero here and not one, it's not actually frame 107 in terms of this because we have our start set to one. So we would actually have to set it to frame 106 to contain our 107 frames. So you just want that to be at the end of your animation so you don't have dead space of just this checkered missing content kind of thing. So the first thing we want to add is the draw sound effect. So right before the gun kind of pops out, it's not too specific, this audio you're adding, but you go to add, go to sound, and then go to where in, so in the description, I've added a link to a download for all the CSGO sounds. So you can download that. Once you have that downloaded, go to where you have that go into it, new CSGO sound effects, all updated CSGO sound effects, sound, weapons updated, and then this is the file that contains all the weapon sounds that uh, we're going to need. So we're going to open up what we want, which is the P2000 sounds, and this is going to give us our sounds associated with the P2000. So the first sound we want is our draw sound, and before we start working with the draw sound or any audio, come to this playback kind of tab on the bottom left. If you click on it, it'll open this up and then we want to turn on audio scrubbing, which will make it easier so that we can actually hear uh, frame by frame when we're kind of working with it so we can more easily line up audio. And then one other thing to make working with the audio easier is that select your added audio box to the right in the strip tab under the sound header you want to select display waveform and this will make it easier to know when the actual actions of the sound are happening. So you can see how that plays and then we want to add the slide back sound. So find where the slide starts to move. So right there seems to be the frame before the slide starts moving. So once again add and then we go to sound, and you want slide back. And just like we do with draw uh, wave file, you want to click display waveform as on the right. So that looks like it's lined up well. And then we want the slide release sound. So find where it starts releasing, go to the frame just before that, go to add, go to sound, and slide back. Excuse me, that's the wrong one. I mean slide release. There we go. Once again, display waveform. There we go. So now, and then I'm just going to move the draw sound a few frames forward so we don't have any overlapping sound. Not that it really matters, but just because it annoys me a little bit. And the next sound we're gonna want to add is clip out. Just like with slide back, slide release, we want to find where the frame where it starts to pull out, which is there. And then we're gonna go to the frame right before that. Go to add, go to sound, clip out. Just 
of the other files, display waveform. So it looks good. And then same with clip in. Find right where it starts to go in, where it start making noise because you have metal contacting metal. Go to the frame right before that. Once again, add sound, and then clip in. Then once again, display waveform because you need to make edits to it. Sounds good. And then in terms of a store sound, the CSGO files actually don't have any dedicated store sounds. But what I like to do is control C to copy the draw sound. Find where the store sound would begin. So frame right before it starts the store. Paste that in. And then on the right, you have a slider for pitch. And what I like to do is either turn it down 0.2 or turn it up 0.2, depending on what kind of sound you're going for. But I'd be careful going any more than 0.2 because it starts to sound a little cartoony and distorted. And that's not what you want. And another feature in this editor is the cut tool. So if you press K, it will cut wherever your cursor is selected, your editing cursor. And then you can delete, just like in Blender in the animation panel, with X. X deletes. And then I didn't mention, but G is what moves the actual file. And then you can select sides to trim down audio files if you want. And that, that concludes the sound added to it. So we have a rough, uh, our audio added. And since this is a new file, we're going to need to specify our output properties again. So go over to the printer tab, the output properties. You're going to need to specify where you're outputting it to. So tell it where you want it to output to. I'm going to call it reload sound because we've added sound now. Accept that. Change your file format to FFmpeg. And then in encoding, change your container type to MPEG-4. And then now since we have audio added, we're going to need to specify an audio codec. And there's, there's quite a few options, but AAC is good. And in terms of a bit rate, which is essentially your quality, I, I just set it up to the maximum, which is 384. And then once you have your output property set, you can go to render and hit render animation. And this is going to render a lot quicker because it's rendering over an MP4 instead of uh, an actual blend file that has to render out the keyframes that you've, you've made. So now that you've rendered that out, you should have your So, I hope you enjoyed and hopefully learned something along the way. Bye for now.